good morning again, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be alive. What about you? Well, I'm Solomon. What about you? Okay, good. I know you're happy to be alive. It could be even if you're in a hospital bed, you're still happy to be alive. Now, uh, let, me, let me show you something this morning. I'm, I'm dealing a little bit with anger. Now, what do you see there? I'm sure you notice it. That's anger. Now, if you add just one letter to anger, look at what you get. You see? Danger. Let me go it again, especially for the children. A-N-G-R, anger. Just one letter to it. And what we have? We have danger. Now, please understand that this morning, as I speak to you on anger and controlling your anger, that it is a dangerous thing for a person not to be able to control the wrath or the anger. Because when somebody gets annoyed and gets angry and fly into perhaps a temper tantrum, the person, if they don't control themselves, they can end up killing somebody. So always remember, just one word added to anger, you get danger, right? Dangerous, dangerous to yourself and to those around you. Uh, now, anger is a natural adaptive response to truth. It inspires powerful, often aggressive feelings and behaviors, uh, which allow us to fight and to defend ourselves when we are attacked. A certain amount of anger is therefore necessary for our survival. But only God can say how we ought to control that anger. And so uh, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 32 says, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that rules his spirit than he that taketh a city. Let me say it again, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 32. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. So understand, uh, we have to spend time on a daily basis. And the earlier in life you learn this, you have to spend time on a daily basis learning how to control your anger and your temper. You can't go through life like a Mack truck, just knocking everything out of your way. No, it won't work. It won't work that way, no matter how big and strong you are. And so we have to depend upon God on a daily basis uh, to help us to control anger. Uh, please understand that, that really one of the major causes of anger is selfishness. Selfishness, of course, on most occasions is the root cause of anger. And so if you watch a child, they go to a supermarket, uh, they want lollipop, they want ice cream, uh, they don't get it, and they, 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 they move into a temper tantrum and stand, stamp up and get in a table, right? If you allow that to go unchecked, listen, man, there is trouble. Uh, if you allow that to go unchecked, so parents, you have to understand that when your child gets into a temper tantrum and seem not to be able to control the temper, don't worry to give them what they're stamping up and bawling and crying for. No, don't do that. Because that really, if you continue to do that and say, because you love the child, you'll give that child that. When that child gets older, you cannot control that. Understand where we're going with that. Uh, so so let, me, let me share a text. Uh, 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 let, let me share a text, especially uh, for married people in Ephesians chapter 4, 26 and 27. It says, uh, Be angry and sin not. Uh, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Ephesians chapter 4, 26 and 27. And every married person needs to learn that text, those two texts. Uh, uh, Be angry and sin not, and let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. The text is saying that we have permission to get annoyed. But when you get annoyed, you have to pause and do nothing. Yeah, don't even talk. Because some people say uh, words are wind. No, 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 no. Words are not wind. We have to understand that words, uh, when once words come out of your mouth, they are like arrows, uh, like a bullet. You can't pull them back. And when you say things because you are angry, the other person who is listening, they remember 
and sometimes they are worth for life. So the text is saying, especially to married people, uh, please uh, be angry and sin not. The sin part of anger is when I want to lash out and I want to hurt an individual. Further, the text says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. It is the devil who wants you to hold on to anger until it's bedtime and you go to bed and you sleep at different ends of the bed or one sleep outside and one in the bed. Well, no, that's not God's way. At the end of the day, we need to take stock of ourselves and see what we have done wrong to the other person. Ask for forgiveness and you pray on behalf of each other and you go to bed with a settled mind. Last thing, last thing before I finish, please understand that if you're in the habit, this is not for married people, though, if you're in the habit of holding grudges and things against people and being annoyed and holding out, uh, please understand if you're in that habit, the person you are annoyed against and you hold on to that anger against that person, that person has the ability to control you because you're in a room sitting, chatting, laughing and talking with somebody and that person who you have anger and hatred against steps into the room and now you have to wipe that smile from your face and make a rude mouth and play fix with the person. Well, the better thing to do is to pray and ask forgiveness. Ask God to forgive you for holding anger against that individual and make it up with the person. As we go through the day, again, remember that anger, ANGR, just one letter you put, and it's danger. And men, please understand the violent way to settle disputes. That's not the way. No, that's not the way. Follow the way of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ himself. May God bless you. Our God and Father, thanks again for an opportunity to speak to somebody and to let them know that they cannot have hatred and anger and go through life that way. No. And Father, uh, through your son Jesus Christ, let somebody know that they need to latch on and hold on to the attitudes of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ himself, who took lashes, his back was lacerated, and instead of lashing out, he said, Father, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Was willing to forgive those who annoyed and persecuted him. Bless us today and help us to follow the Prince of Peace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. May God bless you. Search me.
Say.